Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 25 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series, and the second episode talking about weapons. So the last episode we talked about the arrow gun, which is a pretty darn basic, pretty cheap, pretty easy uh, offensive defensive weapon. But today we're going, we're talking about the heat ray, which is the second one in the handbook. So the heat ray is essentially the exact opposite of every quality that the arrow gun had. The arrow gun was was cheap. It was easy to use. It didn't require very much power. This thing is the opposite. It takes it's expensive. It takes a lot of power to run, but it is pretty darn cool once you get it working. So, in order to make the heat rate, we're going to need these four uh, unique components. Um, so, starting from the left, you're going to need a heat ray core, which is crafted like this. Yes, you do need a Nether Star, so you're going to have to kill a Wither, or if you're on a server buy it from another player or something. Four blaze rods, a piece of redstone dust, and three glowstone blocks. That gets you the heat ray core. So kind of expensive with that nether star. You're also going to need a lens, which is quite a bit cheaper, a block of glass, and four diamonds. I was actually surprised when I looked at the recipe and this didn't require blast glass, but just a piece of glass and four diamonds. Heat ray barrel, six obsidian blocks, two glowstone blocks and a piece, uh, block of glass. So it's not that expensive, it just requires some obsidian, some glowstone. Then the power module. Uh, the power module, you can either make two of them at once with three gold, three steel, two redstone, and an eye of ender, not an ender pearl, an actual eye of ender. That gets you two power modules. Another uh, recipe actually uses copper and electrum. So it's the same thing and this is if you have thermal expansion installed, I imagine. So, it's the same thing that we saw with the uh, electronic circuits. If you don't have access to Eyes of Ender, you can use Copper and Electrum, but you do only get one power module out of that. Still, the option is there to make it slightly cheaper. But this thing can't really be considered cheap. So once you have all that, we can come into the work table and we can combine the heat ray core, the lens, the heat ray barrel and the power module with three obsidian blocks and two base panels to get the heat ray. And this is the heat ray. It looks pretty darn cool. Okay, so to use the heat ray we have to put power in the back. So let me just pop down a dynamometer and we'll again use our creative coil to give it the power that it needs. Now the, the heat ray requires 2.097 megawatts and that is the output of a micro turbine. So the micro turbine, probably the easiest way to power the heat ray, is just to stick a micro turbine on it. So at 16 newton meters at 131072, 131072 radians per second and 16 newton meters. There we go. Now you can't tell the heat ray is on until you walk in front of it. And now I'm on fire. And with the minimum amount of power, its range is right here. So that is the extent of the range of the heat ray with the minimum amount of power. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What is this? A tripwire. How did that get there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 blocks. So there we go. I'm on fire. Now the heat ray can light things on fire. Oh yeah. Lights that wood on fire quite su substantially. Come on, go away. And it can also melt stone. See that stone was thrown off uh, fire? I imagine that that stone would melt if I left it there long enough. Now, the range of the stone melting is not the complete range of the actual thing. See, at the, at the furthest reaches of the heat rays range, here and there and so it doesn't melt it here, it doesn't melt it here, uh, it doesn't work. Um, only within a certain certain distance. Man, that's cool. So I imagine if I leave it there long enough, it'll turn to lava. I haven't actually used the heat ray before. That's pretty awesome, though. And it does affect... Oh, no, actually the uh, the effect on this block has now been blocked by this block. So the heat ray's effect doesn't actually go through blocks, which is important. Um, so the air gun didn't either. Now the heat ray doesn't. That looks um, that just looks awesome. Uh, 
Okay, so, um, this is the minimum amount of power. Now, according to the handbook, this thing doesn't have any minimum torque or speed requirements. It just takes power, which, you know, essentially just means it doesn't matter what torque or speed is, just pump power into this thing to increase its range and increase uh, its effect. Um, because the heat ray has several effects that it can uh, accomplish. It can, you know, obviously set things on fire, melt rock, it can light TNT, that's pretty cool. So if I grab some uh, TNT, is there a TNT that won't blow up uh, everything? Whatever, let's just grab some regular TNT here and place it down. Boom, so yep. I'll have to fill this hole in, but that's, that's, well, I'll do that later. I'll just uh, stop the water getting out for now. I'm on fire. So, that's what the heat ray can do. Now, if we want to make this range longer, we just got to pop more uh, power into it. Now, the heat ray's page does have a formula for the, um, the range of this thing. Um, but when I plugged this in, the watts, uh, into here, it ended up with something like 8200. So I don't know what, I'm, what how, you, how you're actually supposed to solve this equation. Like I, I plugged the power in, divided it by this, added eight, and it, it, it it's obviously the range is not 8200 blocks. The range is like nine blocks, but I don't know. Um, Ray can maybe enlighten me. But uh, if we doubled the torque, now we have doubled the power, uh, which means that we should get a longer range. Yes, we do. See, the range is quite a bit longer now. Quite a bit longer. Quite. A bit, I'm still on fire. It's actually uh, turned the turning this dirt into um, uh, sand and then into glass. And it's actually going through the glass. This is this is pretty cool. Um, Reika told me that this is what was happening underneath the uh, solar tower as well when uh, we turned that dirt into glass. It was actually turning it into sand and then into glass, but it was happening so quickly that it was impossible to see. But because this is at such a long range, we are actually seeing it happening. That is pretty cool. So yeah, apparently the heat rays effects do uh, go through glass, which makes sense since it's glass and the heat ray is using a lens made out of glass. I'm interested to see how far this is going to go. So we saw how far the range was on with the uh, only the basic amount of power, and then I doubled the torque, which would basically just be a, uh, if you use a shaft junction uh, to attach two uh, micro turbines together. And the range has gone quite a bit further, <laughs> quite a bit further. It's just gonna keep going, isn't it? We'll go. Uh, yeah, that's affecting that one. Let me just stand here and I'm on fire. I'm still on fire. And yeah, uh, it's melting the stone. range on this is incredible. Say, so be careful with the heat ray. Uh, yeah, see, look at that. Look how far away we are. Yeah, the heat ray has quite a bit of range. It's pretty crazy. Uh. So yeah, this thing is no joke. So be careful with it. What is up with that? That's weird. Yeah, heat ray is no joke. Um, let me just go ahead and, and place a stone block here. Yep, see it? Turn it into lava. So you could use this to make a lava gen, but I don't know why you would because it's a ridiculous amount of, of power just to do something like that. It won't even let me break, break the log while it's on fire. It's like it has to uh, burn down. Let's turn this off. There we go. So yeah, that's the heat ray. Um, you definitely want to be careful with it. 
so that you don't burn yourself down. Let's just push this back down to 16. So we're back down to the minimum amount of power that it requires, which is setting the range um, to right about here. So let's spawn a monster. Because obviously, we're interested in applications. Okay, so basically it just set him on fire and then he walked away, so... You know. The heat ray sets, sets, sets stuff on fire. You can use it to burn something down. Like, you see that tree way over there? I could set this thing up and I could burn it down from way over here. So be very careful with this, especially if you're on a server. Um, I imagine that the heat ray is probably banned on a lot of servers because of the chaos you could cause with it. Um, although I wouldn't worry about griefers trying to use it because uh, you know it's like Reika said in one of uh, in his one of his things. Um, griefers don't really have the attention span to want to build themselves up to having this sort of a thing. And I wonder why I'm on fire right here. I don't know. But um, that's the heat ray. Uh, it, it does have applications other than um, burning stuff down. Uh, when you get, it, like, uh, for reactor craft, it actually has a, uh, an application. You use the heat ray to produce, um, I think, it, deuterium. Yeah, from hydro, uh, I think. No, you, you use the heat ray to produce the actual plasma for the fusion reactor. Um, yeah. So yeah, the heat ray does have utilitarian applications uh, as for high high end stuff, as well as just burning everything. Um, so yeah, it's pretty darn awesome. So, um, but it's pretty expensive. But you can't you can't deny the fact that the fact that it can go it can shoot way over there with with only the output of well, I mean the output of two micro turbines is really nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of power. Um, but man, it just has such a long range. I really do uh, want to find out what the maximum range on this. Uh, well, I mean, the maximum range is determined by the amount of power you give it. I mean, if you just keep giving it more power, I assume it'll just keep going forever. But I'm actually not sure about that 100%. Um, yeah, see, now this, this, I accidentally placed an iron golem, and now he's burning to death. Look, it's still going. Am I on? Am I on fire underwater? I, I, <laughs> I was actually. Okay, I'm still on fire. And uh, oh, come on, water, go away. I don't want you. Okay, so I found the range. <laughs> with uh, with with the output of two micro turbines, the range is this far away from the heat ray, which is enormous. So yeah, the heat ray is absolutely no joke. If you put enough power in this, you could burn somebody's house down from so far away they would never know what hit them. Um, definitely in a PvP situation, this thing is absolutely devastating. Um, but of course, it only affects the blocks that are directly in front of it. Anyway, that's the heat ray. I'm not really sure what else to talk about with this heat ray. Uh, it's, it's just pretty darn awesome. burns everything. Uh, nothing is safe from the power of the heat ray. It doesn't actually burn... Um, items on the ground, uh, only blocks, <coughs> and players and stuff, and yeah, pretty devastating. So, careful with it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the heat ray. So uh, next episode we'll talk about. Let me pull the handbook up just so you guys know. Uh, and then we're talking about the TNT cannon next episode. So hope you've enjoyed our discussion of the heat ray. Pretty darn expensive, but also pretty darn awesome. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.